Hi, in this video we are going to learn about yet another very interesting topic called randomized algorithms. We will also look at two important varieties of randomized algorithms namely Las Vegas and Monte Carlo. The outline of this lecture is going to be like this. We will first see what are randomized algorithms. Then we will look at two important varieties of randomized algorithms namely Las Vegas and Monte Carlo with a very simple example. Then we will look at uh, Las Vegas algorithms in some detail with few classical examples like quicksort and searching the repeated element. Then we will look at Monte Carlo algorithms in some detail. We will also look at why, why the study of randomized algorithms are very important. And we will finally conclude this lecture by uh, stating some of the advantages of randomized algorithms. First let us try to understand what are randomized algorithms. A randomized algorithm is an algorithm that employs a degree of randomness as part of its logic. It means it uses some random numbers as an auxiliary input to guide its behavior. The performance of these randomized algorithms in terms of their running time and the correctness of output is determined by the random numbers which are generated during its runtime. As you can see from this figure, in addition to the inputs, the algorithm also takes some random numbers as an input. And this, is, this actually allows the algorithm to make random choices during its execution. So it is to be noted that the behavior of the algorithm will vary in different runs, even on fixed input. A very important fact about randomized algorithms is that the expectations on running time and the out correctness of the output are controlled by these random choices made by the algorithm during its runtime and are independent of the inputs. There are some challenges associated with randomized algorithms. The first challenge is to design the algorithm itself. The second challenge is to come up with an analysis to show that its behavior is likely to be good on every input. Now let us look at a very simple example to understand two different types of randomized algorithms. So if you are given with an array of n elements where n is even and uh, given that half of the array contains zeros and the other half contains ones, the goal of our algorithm is going to find an index that contains a one. So you can see that there are two approaches shown here. In the first approach, what we have done is we have we have chosen a random random integer from a range 1 to n, and then we check that whether a of k is 1. So if a of k is 1, we will return k. And this will be continued until you get an a of k as 1. But in the second approach, we have seen the repeat statement executes only 300 times. Here also we make a random choice on 1 to n and then store that value to k and then we will check whether a of k is 1. If a of k is 1, it, we will return the value of k and uh, note that all these statements are executes only 300 times and hence there is a possibility that you may not get a k where a of k is 1. So in, in such a case, our algorithm will return a failed. Now, in the first algorithm, we are very sure that after many random choices, the algorithm will surely return a k where it satisfies a of k is 1. But we are not very sure about its runtime. It may take very long. In the second approach, uh, since the random choice is made only 300 times and the checking is also done only 300 times. And there is a possibility that in all these 300 times, the algorithm may not get an A of K which is equal to 1 and thus it may return a failed. So in the second case, there is no guarantee about the correctness of this algorithm, but we are very sure about its runtime. It will execute only 300 times. So the, f the difference is that in the first case, uh, the algorithm doesn't gamble with its correctness, but it gambles with its runtime. But in the second case, the algorithm gambles with its correctness, but there is, there is 
there is a guarantee on its runtime or it doesn't gamble with its runtime. Now, if you make a very close analysis of the first algorithm, we can understand that the probability of failure of this algorithm is going to be zero. That is, every time the algorithm will come up with a k which is which satisfies the condition a of k is equal to 1. But the but what about the worst case running time? We cannot say anything about the worst case running time because it is quite possible that every random choice made is in such a way that a of k is not equal to 1. And this is possible if we are super unlucky. But uh, usually the expected runtime is going to be order of 1 because you have half a chance of getting a 1 every time. So these types of algorithms are termed as Las Vegas algorithms where you don't have any guarantee on its runtime but you are always guaranteed about its correctness. In the second algorithm, uh, you can observe that there is a small probability of failure. In a single iteration, the probability of not getting an i of k is equal to 1 is going to be 1 by 2. So in all the 300 iterations, the probability of not getting an i of k as 1 is going to be 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into up to 300 times. That is nothing but 1 by 2 raised to 300. But uh, the advantage of this algorithm is that its worst case running time is bounded by order of 1. This is because we, we, are, uh, we are iterating this only 300 times which is a constant and thus we can say that its running time is going to be order of 1. Now let us look at a formal way of explaining what is a Las Vegas algorithm. A Las Vegas algorithm always produces the correct answer but its running time is a random variable whose expectation is bounded by say a polynomial. So they are said to be probably fast but deterministically accurate. A classical example of the Las Vegas algorithm is the randomized quicksort algorithm. So this algorithm always sorts the input array and the worst case time complexity of this is always bounded to order of n log n. Now in this screen you can see the procedure for a randomized quicksort. This is different from the traditional quicksort because of the fact that the pivot is chosen in a random fashion. That is, the pivot is chosen randomly from the given array. In a traditional quicksort, uh, the pivot is chosen in a static way. For example, always the first element is chosen as the pivot. So there is a huge disadvantage in that. It may so happen that your input array is already sorted and in such a case, if you choose the first element as the pivot, then uh, your, in the, your problem will not be getting divided into two and hence uh, your the time complexity will be going to order of n square. Whereas uh, in a randomized algorithm, since the selection of the pivot is always done in a random fashion, uh, the expected runtime uh, is always bounded to n log n. Now let us look at another problem which can be solved using a Las Vegas algorithm. Consider an array of size n and half of the array or n by 2 portion of the array contains distinct values and another n by 2 portion of the array contains another element which is repeated. Uh, for example, uh, in, the ex in the example that you see here, uh, you can see there are four distinct elements 1, 2, 3 and 4 and uh, there is another element which is 7 which is again repeated four times and the total size of the array is 8. So you can see that in this array you have got n by 2 distinct elements and n by 2 copies of another element. Now the problem is to identify the repeated element so that an algorithm can return one of the positions of the repeated element. Let's try to understand how this algorithm works. The algorithm takes two arguments a and n. Also note that uh, the indices of the array range from 1 to n. And we have an infinite while loop here. And inside that infinite while loop, we, uh, we are randomly picking two indices, i and j. And uh, we have done a mod n plus 1 operation here, just to make sure that uh, the value that we are getting is in the range of 1 to n, including 1 and n. Now, now we have an if condition here. The if condition checks two things. It checks whether i and j are different. And a of i is equal to a of j. So if both those conditions satisfy, then we will return the value of i. To make it more clear, let's work out this algorithm 
with the example which is shown here. Assume that the algorithm picks up the indices 2 and 3. We can note that the content at 2 is 2 and the content at 3 is 7. So the contents are different and so it will not return anything. Now the algorithm will again execute. Suppose that uh, in this turn the algorithm chooses uh, 4 and 4. And uh, here since the same index is selected the algorithm will not return anything. That is the since the condition i not equal to j is not satisfied. Now assume that uh, the algorithm picks up uh, the indices 5 and 7. The content at 5 is 7 and also the content at 7 is also 7. So now the algorithm will uh, will go ahead and return the value 5. Now let us do an informal analysis to study the performance of this algorithm. The probability that uh, the, the random index that you choose first time, that is the value of i, is going to be the index of one of the repeated elements is, is given by n by 2 divided by n, n by 2 divided by n. This is because the array contains n by 2 duplicate elements. Now uh, when you pick the second index that is j, the probability that you are you're choosing, uh, choosing the index of a repeated element different from the already chosen uh, index is given by uh, n by 2 minus 1 because you have n by 2 minus 1 indices uh, which, is, uh, which is other than the index which is already chosen. So n by 2 divided by n. So the, the probability that you are choosing i and j together is going to be the product of these probabilities. That is n by 2 divided by n into n by 2 minus 1 divided by n. And, that's, and that is equal to n by 2 into n by 2 minus 1 divided by n square. So the probability of choosing the correct indices thereby the algorithm will exit is given by n by 2 into n by 2 minus 1 divided by n square. And it can be verified that this value is always going to be greater than or equal to 1 by 5 for all n greater than or equal to 10. It again implies that uh, the probability of not choosing the correct indices and exiting is given by 1 minus 1 by 5 that is 4 by 5. So it can be verified that this probability that is the probability of not choosing the correct indices and exiting is always less than 4 by 5. Now let us compare the performance of a randomized algorithm and a deterministic algorithm for this problem. So we are already aware that uh, the probability that a randomized algorithm does not terminate is given by 4 by 5. It, it is always going to be less than 4 by 5. This is applicable for a single iteration. Assuming that the algorithm runs 100 iterations, then the probability will be 4 by 5 whole raised to 100. And this value is a very, very, very small value. So we can say that with very high probability, the algorithm will terminate within 100 iterations. But what about a deterministic algorithm? A deterministic algorithm can take more than n by 2 steps in the worst case. The worst case may be that all the repeated elements are in these are present in the second half of the array. So assuming that uh, uh, one of your problems is having a size of 2 million, your array contains 2 million elements, then our randomized algorithm will take only 100 iterations, whereas a deterministic algorithm will require more than 1 million iterations. So it is very clear that in this problem, randomized algorithm is very much advantageous compared to the deterministic algorithm. In a similar way, randomized algorithms are quite useful in many of the practical applications. Now let us look at Monte Carlo algorithms in some detail. Monte Carlo algorithms runs a fixed number of steps and are expected to produce an answer that is correct with a probability greater than or equal to 1 by 3. So that's why they are said to be probably correct but deterministically fast. A classical example of a Monte Carlo algorithm is Fermat's primality testing algorithm. This algorithm checks whether a given number is prime. If the given number is a prime, then this method always returns a true. But if the given number is a composite number, that is it is a non-prime number, then we are not very guaranteed about the correctness of this algorithm. 
But it is to be noted that Monte Carlo algorithms are very useful for applications which doesn't mind an occasional incorrect answer. Even though randomized algorithm does not offer any guarantees on its running time or the correctness of the output, they are applied in a wide range of practical problems just because of the fact that the independent repetitions of such algorithms can, can give better results. For example, independent repetitions of Monte Carlo algorithms can drive down the failure probability exponentially. Similarly, independent repetitions of Las Vegas algorithms can improve the execution run times. Now let us look at some of the advantages of randomized algorithms. We have already understood that randomized algorithms are really simple and their performance will be better than their deterministic counterparts in some of the applications. This is all because randomness adds an interesting dimension to the computation. So it can be concluded that randomized algorithms can be faster and can be more elegant than their deterministic counterparts. Now as an assignment you can write the algorithm for a randomized binary search and implement the same using C or Python. In a usual binary search what we do is we pick the middle element and then uh, search for the key and if it is not found we will proceed we will we, will, we can avoid one of the halves and proceed to the other half and recursively things are done whereas in a randomized uh, randomized uh, binary search what we are going to do is we are going to pick a random index instead of choosing the mid index we are going to choose a random index for example a randomized algorithm running on this array would pick a random index say uh, the index picked by the algorithm is 4 and when and then we we check whether a match is found at 4 and if uh, if it is not a match and we understand that uh, the value is less than what is present in 4 then we will continue our search only to this portion in the next video we will be looking at string matching algorithms see you then goodbye